G'day everyone, welcome to the basics of socket circuits part 2. In the first video we installed the single socket there. And in this video we're going to be adding the socket to an existing socket circuit. So I'll go ahead, cut this one off, so we can start again. This setup here that I've made, as I explained in the first video, is the internal workings of a standard wall. We've got two studs here, and a dwang across here, and a piece of painted jib that represents the exterior of the wall. So in this one we're going to be adding a second socket, by way of adding another flush box to the wall cavity here. On this side, we'll pretend is a bedroom, and on the other side might be something like a lounge or a hallway. So what we want to do is add another socket on the same circuit that's facing into the lounge. To do that, from the other side of the wall, you would cut a hole that you could fit a flush box into the wall at the right height for. You would either use a C-clip if there's no stud available, or secure a flush box to a stud for a more secure socket. Once you've cut the hole by the stud, you can then go and secure your flush box to the wall. Off camera, I'm going to install this flush box facing the opposite side of this wall over there. Alright, perfect. Now that flush box is in there, all we need to do is navigate cable through the wall to the other socket. Now for socket circuits, we're using 2.5mm TPS cable. So we'd simply run this through the wall cavity and fish it out at the other end. We we'll make sure there's ample cable outside of each flush box to be able to fit our sockets off. On this side, as explained in the last video, we go from the knife edge of our hand to the end of our thumb to determine the length of cable we want hanging outside of the flush box. After that, we strip our cable back. And then we cut these two cables to the same length hanging outside of the socket. So you can see all the cores match up now. Now what we'll do is we'll strip them back about a centimetre and a half as explained in the last video. Now you've got them spread apart. We're going to be twisting the same coloured cores with the same coloured cores. So your two green ones go together, splay the copper ends out a bit, and then start twisting them together. Trim it back, so there's about a centimetre sitting out there, and do the same with the two blacks and the two reds. Now we have our three cables joined at the socket. What we'll do is install our socket with these cables. So again, the red ones go into A, which is active or live. The green ones go into E, which is your earth. And the black ones go into N, which is your neutral. Screw the screw in. So it's only contacting with the copper and not the insulation. Double check that by looking directly in at the screw and looking in at an angle to make sure you only see insulation hanging out the back of the socket here. Give it a pull, do the pull test and that's nice and firm, it's not coming out of there. Same again with the neutral and earth. Once that's on, screw it back to the wall with flush box screws. Use a level, make sure it's level and then screw it back firm so it doesn't wobble side to side. Then the socket on the other side of the wall is just as explained in the previous video. Simple, there's one cable there. So the socket will be fit off exactly as shown in the previous video. So once you fit the other socket off on the other side of the wall, the installation will now look like this. Turn the wall around and you can see the single socket on the other side of the wall. When you are wiring for socket outlets, ensure that there is a maximum of six outlets per feed from the switchboard. 
do not go more than that. Part three will be coming out soon. For that, I'll be showing you how to wire a socket RCD for when you're adding new cables off an existing setup where there's no RCD existing on the switchboard already. All right, cheers guys for watching.